My name is Bob Jaynes and I am a former museum director and the editor of Museum Management and Curatorship. I did a Future of Museums video back in 2009 based on my book Museums in a Troubled World, wherein I discussed the relevance of museums in light of various global issues impacting society. Nearly five years later, the world is even more troubled and the role of museums in addressing these issues is largely unexamined and unresolved. I've worked in and around museums for the past 38 years, and my personal mission has always been to ask and answer the question, what does it mean to be a human being? This question has become increasingly more important now, as each of us must figure out what it does mean to be a human being when every living system is in decline, and the rate of decline is accelerating. I regret to think that this question should be the central preoccupation of our lives. It will be for our children. As for our grandchildren, who knows? But the year 2050 will undoubtedly be markedly different than the privileged lives we lead today. It would seem that the museum community is sleepwalking into the future, along with the rest of society. We've now reached the threshold of 400 parts per million of climate warming carbon in the atmosphere for the first time in human history, with no discussion or outcry from the citizenry, the media, much less the intelligentsia. The 400 ppm threshold is a dire wake-up call for each of us to adopt clean energy technology and reduce our carbon emissions. Our profound challenge is actually to reduce our fossil fuel use by 50% by 2050 in order to forestall the worst impacts of climate disruption. Because of this, museums must really become intellectual activists. And by intellectual activism, I don't mean creating new knowledge, but using existing knowledge and making it more understandable, useful, and accessible. And you already know what one of the most vexing issues of our time is, and that's climate change. It's been noted that the public debate around climate change in the United States is no longer about science, but it's about values, beliefs, and ideology. I suggest that the same thing is also true in Canada. Note our federal government's single-minded commitment to tar sands development in Alberta. If you're opposed to tar sands development, you're opposed to the well-being of Canada. What we actually need, rather than conservative economic ideology, is a thoughtful and immediate societal discussion on the full range of the technical, social, and emotional dimensions of climate change. Museums are grounded in a sense of place, they're committed to a sense of stewardship, and they're universally respected as social institutions, and they can readily serve as the vital bridge between science and the public interest by initiating and hosting this dialogue. My question is this, what is the role of museums in charting a path to sustainability that preserves and uses our irreplaceable cultural legacy? Like it or not, this question lies at the heart of contemporary museum management and governance. No amount of digital technology, gaming or robotics will be of any use if the biosphere dissolves. So in considering the role of museums in charting a path to sustainability, I'd like you to think about three questions. First, why do we believe that museums may abstain from addressing societal needs and aspirations and be absolved of greater accountability, especially at this time of profound socio-environmental change? Second, what is your museum's higher calling? Meaning what public value do you wish to add to your community and the world? And third, when you think about your museum, where does it sit on the continuum between internally focused and externally mindful? Happily, some museums are paying attention. Take note, for example, of the American Museum of Natural History's Museums and Climate Change Network, or the Manitoba Museum's new interactive exhibition intended to save Lake Winnipeg from ecological disaster. But there simply aren't enough museums doing this sort of work. Nonetheless, I remain optimistic about museums because they've existed for centuries, unlike the vast majority of business corporations. Museums have always had some sort of adaptive intuition, I don't know how else to put it, 
to reinvent and transform themselves, however slowly and unconsciously. Museums have evolved through time, from the elite collections of imperial dominance to educational institutions for the public, and now to the museum as mall, an appendage of consumer society. The museum as mall is the latest chapter in this trajectory and really is the dead end of materialism, overly concerned with leisure, entertainment, and consumption. The museum's next iteration must now be defined, and I submit that that agenda is crystal clear, and it must be grounded in museums providing sustained and substantive public benefit. In short, museum professionalism and the museum's yearning for popularity must now make room for the durability and well-being of individuals, communities, and the natural world. This is the work that really needs to be done. Thank you very much for listening, and all the best with your important work.